So I'm going to hand it over to Julieta now. She's going to talk on a couple of the use cases she'll be sharing. Juli, over to you. Of course. Perfect. Thank you so much, Marquis, for having me today. And hi, everybody. For today's session, I would like to show you two use cases on Asana AI Studio and see how you could implement those in your instance. For our first use case, we have what we've called Smart Due Data Adjuster. Now, we've seen while working with multiple clients that many have global teams distributed across multiple countries. And Asana's project templates are great because they allow us to set up project roles. We are able to set as I need if we'd like to or a whole schedule based on our start date or the due date of our project. But until now, we weren't able to have our specific teammates calendars embedded into our project. Whoever was a project manager or a project owner, owner will need to go into that project and okay, manually review and see if any of the task is landing on a holiday or on a weekend and adjust that manually. So I'm going to jump into Asana and I'll show you the AI rule that we build that is going to allow us to solve for this use case. Here in Asana, I am in our marketing team. So I'm going to kick off a new template using this website launch that we have over here. So I'll quickly open up that one. We're going to use the template just as if we were using it to build a usual project. Over here, if you're new to Asana, you would put your project name, select the team, the privacy. And then in this case, our template is set to be after our start date. We're going to leave it with today, but this gives you the chance to define what is going to be your project start date. And then all of your task schedules are going to be schedule based on that, the task due date, excuse me. So we're going to create that project. It's going to take a minute or two to create it all. And then once it's created, I'm going to show you which are the custom fields that we're going to be using in this rule. We'll run it and then I'll show you the back end as well of the rule so you can see how that it's set up. We have our project here. It is being created, but I'll show you which are the custom fields that we're going to be using. In this case, we have a single select custom field, the activity role one, and that is outlining who's the role that is going to be in charge of each of the tasks. So we have RPM, designer, copywriter, developer, and brand manager, but you can have as many as you'd like to. Uh, you have up to 500 option values that you can add, so you could add multiple ones. And then we have a holiday review flag uh, custom field. Now, this is also a single select custom custom field. And this is what is going to become the trigger of a rule. What are we thinking over here? Here we have our a whole project created that once the project is fully created, whoever is that project owner can run the rule that we have built across all the tasks in the project to do that first analysis and to ensure that none of those tasks are falling in a weekend or in a holiday for that specific team member. I'm going to do that and I'll also show you how bulk actions work. The goal in this case would be selecting all of the tasks that we have. We have a total of 18 tasks if I'm not mistaken. So how do you do bulk actions? You can select the first task and then you'll click shift on your keyboard and then scroll to the last one and select it as well. And over here, you have the panel that we, it would allow you to do multiple actions. But as it is an update of a custom field, we can do it from the list view. So what I'm going to do in this case is set it up to review because that's what's going to trigger my rule. Now I'm going to set that you see it has been updated across all the tasks of the project. We are now seeing how the rule is running. So if we expand our pop-up, we see, okay, the smart due date adjuster is working on the first task and on another 17 ones, which are the other tasks in the project. So in a minute, we shall see once we come here, if there was any of the tasks due date that was updated, because that's what we set up in the rule for it to make. Now I'm going to close this and we'll go to see the back end of the rule while we uh, let the rule run on all of the tasks of our project. So I'm going to open up the rule. We are here in a smart due date adjuster. And before we review the guidance, we can take a look at what the rule setup is. For the triggers of a rule, we have two triggers over here. The first one is the update of that custom field that I'll just show you. So we are saying when holiday review flag is set to review, we are using a combined trigger over here. So rather than adding the condition of what's the value that we want it to be updated in the condition, we are doing it together in the trigger. This is an update. It has been around for a few months now, but is a good one when you're working with AI conditions. And then our second trigger is going to be when the due date is changed. What are we adding that? Because we would like, of course, that our project schedules never change, but they do every day, every time. We want to ensure that as the project is open, if there's a due date that is changed in the future, then this rule is also going to check that that no due date is not falling on a holiday or on a weekend. For our conditions, we are using an AI condition. So rather than using the existing conditions that we have on, on Asana rules, we are using an AI one. So if you want to add another condition, you have the chance to create your own and it's going to create that conditional check. 
feedback. What is nice about that is that Asana is going to let you know if you can improve your conditions because any conditions that you set up should be a true or false condition. Otherwise, it's not going to work as it should. So what are we saying over here? Check if the due date falls matches a holiday in the country determined by the activity role. Or our second condition, which the rule is also going to take a look, is if the due date falls on a Saturday or on a Sunday. So if that happens, what do we want it to do? Which are the actions that we set up? We're going to set the due date using AI. So we're going to let AI decide what's going to be that new due date. And then we're going to add a comment in the task as well, letting AI add that comment. So based on that setup, we can now review what is the guidance that we've added over here. Once we open that, what, are, what we're saying basically is your job is to identify the country based on the task activity role. So what we did over here is map each of our activity roles to the country where that team member is living. We did Argentina, US, Mexico, and Canada because that's where Surface team members live. But this could be set up to any country in the world, really. So that's something that uh, based on your activity roles, your team members, and where they live, you can adjust as needed. Then we are uh, letting AI providing with the, which are the instructions that it need to follow. So if those conditions that I just mentioned are met, then what we want AI to do is add a comment in the task explaining that the original due date is falling on a holiday or on a weekend in that country. And then we also want it to adjust to the next business day so that there's the a new due date that it's a, an actual one that they can achieve. Now, the additional resource that uh, we are giving to the rule is a JSON code where we are outlining which are all the holidays on each of those countries. That is something that, of course, yes, we did outside of this rule. We did it with Claude, but you can use any LLM and have this created for you in a matter of two minutes, if, if so. And of course, then spend a few other minutes checking that the information is correct. But over here, we have all of those holidays so that the AI can take a look at it. And if they match this, then it's going to change the due date and add that comment for us. The last thing that I want to show you before we go back and see that result is that in this case, we are using the cheapest model that Asana offers for us. We are using GPT-40 Mini. So just to show you that depending on what do you want to achieve, you can change that your model as needed. But for this type of actions, you don't need to spend a lot of credits using the high cost model ones. You can start by testing the smallest one and then you'll go from there. So with that being said, I'm going to close the rule and then we shall see now if there was any comment added to our tasks, because that's what we said, right? We told it to change the due date of the task and add a comment to it. So if we take a look at this section, we have in our SOP library setup task, a new comment. And if we open that, we're going to see, okay, the due date, and it was the original due date. So November 24th for role project manager falls on a holiday weekend in Argentina. So I'm adjusting it to the next business day. What's interesting about this, and you see, sorry, the due date as well has been changed now to November 25th, which is the next business day. What is also interesting about this, and we've showcased it before to you, but that's something that I really like, is that you can see the reasoning of the AI rule. So if we open up, you see, okay, what is the thought is going to analyze the task based on the guidance and then it's taking a look at the activity role, the due date, and then it's checking if that due date is a holiday. In this case, that's true. So that is why it ran the action. So that's the first use case that I wanted to show you. As you saw in this case, we don't have any other comment or yes, we have another one over here. Let's see. Okay, so in this case, that due date falls on a holiday in the US. So it's adjusting it to the next business day. I want to show you as well what happens if we change it manually, right? So let's say with landing page copy, we said, okay, we won't be able to do it on the 26th. We are going to do this on the 27th. Now we are using some dependency management over here. We have it set up to be maintain buffer. So that is why the project is showing us that now we have these four dependent uh, tasks. So I'm going to say, okay, we are good with this. We want the due dates to be updated. And now the rule is going to run again. And in a minute, we shall see if that no due date falls uh, on a weekend. So while that charts, that's the last thing that we'll see for this use case. What I wanted to share is that, that you can customize it as you'd like to. If your project, let's say that they are open for longer than a year, you could add a JSON with both the 2025 and 2026 holidays. In some countries, they change a lot. So that's something that could be added as well. You can customize it with whatever activity roles and countries you have in your Team. There we go. We have our new comment over here. Now, if we open that up, we are saying, okay, the due date of November 27, 
for the copywriter for a holiday in the US, adjusting it to the next business day. And this is an example, right? Like you could say, okay, rather than automatically changing the due date of the task and adding a comment, I could say that we could create an approval task for the project manager to take a look at that. Or it could provide it as a suggestion in the comment, but it wouldn't change the due date itself. It will add mention someone to comment that. So that's the nice thing that we like about AI Studio, that you can customize it as you'd like to be based on your needs. So we're going to go back to our presentation and we're going to talk about use case number two. The goal of this AI rule is to identify past requests. We're going to show you how that looks like in a creative production project, but this could be used for an IT ticketing project or system, or it could be used for a customer service ticketing process, for whatever uh, project, uh, production project that you have in Asana that it's receiving requests and you want to ensure that if there are new ones, we can take a look at all request and see if they could inform our new request, then that's where this rule could be used. This is a whole creative production project, so it has AI rules for the whole process since uh, renaming a task until completing it and it goes through all the intake, the planning and the execution phases. As we've shown you on past webinars, how the an AI rule could be built to rename a task, to do a QA check uh, and also what happens if there's more information needed. We're going to jump directly to show you that uh, rule to identify um, a relevant past request. So over here, we have a submission that was made. It says, Asana for Earth Hero Image, submitted by Matias for Q4. And if you see over here, it has already been prioritized and all of the information in the custom field has been filled out with what is the need, uh, who's the owner, and additional notes, and all the information can be found as well in the description of that task. So our next step in this flow, it would be moving the task to this section so that we can see if there are any, any relevant past requests that could inform our new one. So I'm going to, in this case, move it to our next section. And now the rule should run to review that. So while that runs, I'm going to show you the back end of that rule. This is a simpler one, uh, but it could also be customized to, to add additional details. So what that rule is doing, it's saying whenever the task is moved to a section and the section is identify relevant past requests, it's going to check if there are any similar past requests. And if so, then it's going to add a comment in the task using AI. So we're letting AI as well post that comment. And then it's going to move the task to the planning resourcing section. Otherwise, if this condition is not met, it's just going to move the task to the next section so that the flow can continue. And on the guidance, what we are telling AI is you're an assistance to Asana creative team. You will receive a creative request. It needs to look through the project and then find any past requests that are similar to this request. So if it founds it, the goal is that it can link it to them, like in that comment, link to those tasks, explain why they are similar and inform how, and showcase, sorry, how they can inform the current request. Otherwise, it's not going and post that comment. So if we close that, let's drag and drop it over here. Okay, there it goes, there it's running. In a minute, we shall see that. So while that runs, what is going to be important if you decide to test this in your project is that you ensure all of your completed tasks are saved in a completed section or in the last section of the project. There are use cases we've worked with other clients where once those tasks are finalized, they are being moved to other projects, to other archive projects or to other brand projects. So in those cases, Asana cannot, like we won't be able to review all of those completed tasks that, that were done in the past. So that's something that you should consider if you want to test this. Here we have our new comment. It has been moved to the next section. And if we open our task, we shall see over here that AI posted a new comment. So here it is saying, I've identified a similar request that can inform our current hero image project. It's giving us the link to that task so we could open that up and see those details, those comments, what was the final deliverable there. And it's letting us know, okay, these are the key similarities content focus, brand requirement, technical requirements. These are our recommendations. So what you should do based on uh, what was done for that task. And then a final comment on why it's important to leverage that Earth Month project to create our 
uh, our new hero image. So again, this was, um, in this case, this um, guidance is more generic, right? We are letting, we, we told it, explain me why they are similar and give me a recommendation. But you can get as creative as you'd like to and provide very specific guidance on all the things that it could look like. I don't know, who was the um, team member who worked on that? What was the final decision made? When was this completed? Like you could ask multiple things as well and not just why they are similar. Yeah, I'll give the floor back to, to Marquis. Love to hear from you though. What do you want to see? I mean, we're building our own use cases. We're building them specifically for our customers. But if there's anything that you've been wanting to see or you've been struggling with, we'd love to know a bit more and then we can use that for future um, sessions. If you want to see what AI Studio can look like for you, here's another QR code for you. Or you can send us an email. Feel free to book a demo. We can come in. We can talk about what it is you'd like to see. We can custom tailor something for your use case and really show you what, what could be possible um, within your team. And so uh, feel free to book that time with us.